Welcome to the next part of the module on Android Concurrency Frameworks, which continues our discussion of the Android Handler class. This part explains how the Handler class enables the posting and processing of runnable objects via the message queue associated with the threads looper. It also shows how handlers and runnables are applied in Android applications and its Hammer Concurrency Framework. The Handler class defines methods that enable programs to post a runnable to or remove a posted runnable from the message queue associated with a handler, as shown at this link. The handler and its thread-specific looper collaborate to dequeue each posted runnable and dispatch its run hook method in accordance with the command processor pattern, which packages a piece of application functionality as well as its parameterization and object to execute it in another context. For example, at a later point in time, in a different process, in a different thread, etc as described at this link. There are several variants of post, some of which are highlighted on this slide. A runnable can be posted to a handler in several ways. For example, it can be added to the front or rear of the message queue and processed as soon as the queue is ready to do so. Alternatively, a delay can be specified using relative time, which indicates how much time must elapse before the runnable can be processed. Or finally, a delay can be specified using absolute time which indicates when the runnable should be processed. The latter two methods allow programs to implement timeouts, ticks, and other timing-related behavior. There are also several variants of the handler's remove method that delete any pending posts of the designated runnables that still reside on the underlying message queue. Now that we've shown the key post-related methods in the Android Handler class, we'll analyze an example of how to post a runnable command to an activity via its runOnUI thread method, which uses an internal handler object to ensure this runnable is executed in the context of the user interface thread. Since this example examines a lot of code, you may want to download the Android open source release, available at this link, and follow along. This example is based on the Android Activity class, which provides a single focused thing that a user can do, as described at this link. The Activity class defines dozens of callback hook methods and lifecycle methods, as shown at this path name. These methods perform their computation in the user interface thread. To allow background threads to execute actions in the user interface thread, the Activity class defines a run on UI thread method. An action passed to this method must be implemented as a runnable command, as depicted in this code snippet from an earlier video that showed how the strategy pattern can be applied in the ping pong application to print ping and pong strings to the user interface thread. Internally, the run on UI thread method uses an instance of a handler that's associated with the user interface thread's looper to execute the specified action in the context of the user interface thread. If the thread calling run on UI thread is the user interface thread itself, the action is run immediately. If it's not the user interface thread itself, however, the action is posted to the message queue of the user interface thread via the handler. Naturally, this use of the handler's post method is not limited to the activity class. It's a common Android idiom that will apply throughout this module. Now that we've analyzed the activity's run on UI thread method, we'll examine the implementation of the handler's post method. We also show how the Android handler, looper, and message queue classes collaborate to use and implement a portion of the Hammer framework outlined in an earlier video. Although you needn't understand all these steps to use the Hammer framework effectively, it's useful to know how it works since common and generalizable concurrency patterns and framework techniques appear throughout its implementation. When an action is posted to the activity from a background thread, the handler's post method adds the runnable action to the looper's message queue. This method performs several steps, many of which are shared with the send message methods, as shown at this path name. First, post calls the getPostMessage method, which obtains a message from a factory and encapsulates the runnable as a callback field in the message. Post then inserts this encapsulated runnable into the message queue via a call to send message delayed with a delay of zero, 
which ultimately calls the send message at time method. This method first stores the thread specific looper's message queue in a local variable and then sets the target of the encapsulated runnable to be this handler, which the looper uses later to dispatch the runnable's run hook method. Finally, the encapsulated runnable is in queued on the looper's message queue. At this point, we switch our focus from the background thread to the user interface thread, starting with its looper. The looper's loop method collaborates with the message queue and handler classes, as described in a previous video. In particular, loop calls dispatch message to process an encapsulated runnable via the handler's handle callback method. This method then invokes the encapsulated runnable's run hook method to execute the command. Run executes in the thread associated with the handler instance, which in this case is the user interface thread. Note the inversion of control on the path through this code. The looper runs the user interface thread's event loop, and encapsulated runnables are executed via the run hook methods provided by application developers. We'll explore the entire code path used by the Hammer framework to post, schedule, and dispatch runnables later in this module when we present the command processor pattern. In summary, the post methods in the handler class form a key portion of the Android Hammer framework. In particular, they provide the means to NQ and later process runnables posted from within a single thread to itself or posted from one thread to another. They're often used to send runnable commands from one or more background threads to the user interface thread. In fact, the collaboration between handler's post methods and the message queue and looper classes implement the command processor pattern as described in upcoming videos. In practice, the post methods of Handler often leverage Java's local class feature, which allows runnable commands to reference variables in lexically enclosing classes or variables in the lexically enclosing method, as shown by the highlighted variables in this code snippet from the ping pong application shown in the earlier video. In this example, the mTextView data member in the Android Platform Strategy class is accessed within the run hook method of the runnable command. These Java and Android capabilities provide a variant of closures, which allow a method to access non-local variables even when invoked outside its immediate lexical scope, as described this link. Java's support for closures is also covered at this link. The handler's use of runnable commands centralizes the processing logic at the point where the post method is invoked. So there's no need to write separate receiver logic to handle the post. In contrast, the handler's send message methods require developers to explicitly extend the handle message hook method, as shown in the next video. To showcase the command processing features of handler, we analyzed an example of the Android activity class run on UI thread method, which uses an internal handler object to ensure runnable actions passed to it from background threads are executed in the context of the user interface thread.